We'll look at the parent function of cotangent of x, and we'll define a few key points just like we did for tangent of x. But as you can see, the first cycle that I'm going to complete um, isn't in the negative area like it was for tangent. So just to refresh your memory, tangent started at negative pi over 2 on my graph and then went to pi over 2 and then eventually to 3 pi over 2. The reason why I did that was I wanted to show the very first uh, cycle of, uh, of the tangent function is part of it is on in the negative area. Uh, on the negative x side and then part of it is on the positive x side. Uh, just keep in mind that the cycles continue all the way on to negative infinity and positive infinity in both directions. This just so happens to ask for two cycles. Um, so I, I graphed it from negative power 2 to positive 3 power 2. Whereas with uh, cotangent, we're going to see that uh, because of the way that uh, cotangent is related to tangent in that it's the reciprocal. We would define uh, tangent as y over x and cotangent as x over y. So looking at the coordinate points, um, same key values um, because they yield nicer values um, at the pi over 4 reference angles and at the quadrantal values, we'll use those to help us come up with the first two cycles. And then from there, you won't have to draw the uh, table of values any further, you'll just use your knowledge of the key points and transform those key points. So we are going to begin with um, jumping on our table of values by pi over 4. So 0, pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4. And with tangent, you notice I started at negative pi over 2. With um, cotangent, I'm going to begin at 0. And there's a reason for that. Okay, so then pi... 5 pi over 4, and, and the way you can do this is think of a 0 as 0 pi over 4, 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, which reduces to pi, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4 is 3 pi over 2, 7 pi over 4, and then 8 pi over 4 is 2 pi. So let's see if that gets us two cycles. When I take a look at 0 degrees or 0 radians, I have the coordinate point 1, 0. If I put the, y, the x over the y, I get undefined. What we see now is that what had produced at 0 for tangent, we got 0. Um, now the 0 is in the denominator, which then makes your, um, your function undefined, and, we, and therefore a vertical asymptote will occur there. At pi over 4, you still get a ratio of equal values, so we get uh, 1 at pi over 4. At pi over 2, um, again, at pi over, tangent of pi over 2 was equal to 0. Anything that was 0 before is now, sorry, tangent at pi over 2 was undefined before, and so anything that was undefined before it now is 0, and so it's uh, the exact opposite of what had occurred in tangent. At 3 pi over 4, we get um, that now we're in the second quadrant where tangent and cotangent is negative. At pi, we get it's undefined again because we have 0 being at the bottom. And then 5 pi over 4, we're in the third quadrant where tangent and cotangent are positive. So positive 1. 3 pi over 2, we get 0. 7 pi over 4, negative 1. And then at 2 pi, undefined. So if we go to our graphs, um, the first thing I'm going to do is count by pi over 4, starting at um, the first. So we have 0, pi over 4, the first unit over, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, pi, 5 pi over 4, 3 pi over 2, 7 pi over 4, and then 2 pi. It's really important that you define at least the first coordinate point so I know what you're jumping by and then um, and then where your key values are. So from here, we're going to go ahead and draw our vertical asymptotes wherever it was undefined. So here you guys have that it's undefined at 0, it's undefined at pi, and then it's undefined again at 2 pi. So let's go ahead and draw in all of our vertical asymptotes. So at 0 at pi, and then at 2 pi. 
and then plotting our points from there. Sorry, that was really messy. Fix that vertical asymptote here. Okay, now plotting the other defined points we have at pi over four, we get the coordinate point one. At pi over two, it's zero. At three pi over four, negative one. So you should notice that the this looks exactly like the tangent function, except for it starts off going towards infinity on this side and then ends at, um, as it approaches pi, it's going to negative infinity. So if you look at the tangent function, it looks like the x cubed function, whereas the cotangent function looks like the reflection of that. And then also a difference is that although the period is pi, for for the tangent function, it goes from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, versus the cotangent function goes from 0 to pi before it completes a cycle. So what I'm going to mark off here, just so you see it, is that this spacing right here will tell us that the period is equal to pi. And also um, graphing the rest of the uh, function, we see that it starts to repeat itself. And that's the definition of what uh, makes these functions periodic is that um, they occur in cycles and each cycle that is completed is the period. So the period is the length of the cycle, in which case it's pi. And now, so, so certain other things that might be asked of you is where are the vertical asymptotes occurring? So because it's vertical asymptotes, my equation will be x equals and it looks like uh, the x values are pi to pi. So we can say it's occurring at x equals pi, switch over here, to pi times k. And if we're defining what k is, if it's 1 pi, 2 pi, and make a prediction about the next one being 3 pi, 4 pi, those values are all integer values. So k, where k is any integer. Now, when we're defining the domain, we're saying, well, x can be any value except what values will, will we exclude? And the values we exclude are the values of the vertical asymptotes. So x cannot be equal to pi times k, where, again, the um, k value is all integers, where k is any integer. And finally, the range is, since it goes, expands from negative infinity to infinity um, within even just one cycle, then we say that the range is negative infinity to infinity. It takes on all values for y.